Okay. All right. Hello. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining me today. And I have some questions that you have asked me that I want to share with you. So the first question you asked is, what kind of paint and why? So most people do, if it's paint, they'll do something like watercolor, acrylic, or oils. And I have used oils like a long time ago, but that's not my preferred medium. Um, and a medium is like the materials that you're using. So that's the word, right? Like, so watercolor is a medium, marker is a medium, crayons are a medium. And so the one that I like to use is acrylic because they dry faster and watercolor because you can do lots of fun things with watercolor. A lot of people would tell you that watercolor is really hard but I think it's fun because it's playing with water and it's playing with color. Acrylics are fun because they blend, but they tend to dry a little bit faster than oils. And oils, people like to use them because they stay wet for a really long time. So they can like go back and forth to their painting and try to blend the colors and so forth. But I'm not into that because I want um, something faster. So I want to share with you the watercolor set that I bought because this is such an easy starter set. And this is at Target. It's called uh, Kid Made Modern. And this is the watercolors from that set too. And as you can see, I've used almost all of them. See how they're almost all empty? And so basically, to paint, the thing you need to do is just get started. And so, uh, and the next question you had is, how do you get better at art? You get better by just doing it. So that's it. It's all about exploration and you don't need to have a, um, you don't have to worry about being perfect. It's all about having fun and exploring. So, I also have these pens and they're watercolor pens and they have a brush on them. Can you see? Okay. And there's water inside of them. So watercolors just need water and a pen color. So what do you, what do you two girls have in front of you? You have to unmute. Paper and pencils. Okay. So do you have any paint? No. Um, so what, since you have paper and pencils, what do you want me, do you still want me to tell you about my art or do you want me to show you how to draw? I can't hear you. How about both? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me finish telling you about my art since I didn't bring pencils and paper, but maybe I can gather that in a minute. So I want to share with you some of my early paintings. I don't know if I can reverse my screen. So um, these are watercolors, and I'm going to share with you my watercolors and my inspiration. So, like, here is a picture that I took on a walk. Can you see it? It's a rose, right? Yes. Okay, so I took this picture on my walk and I said, this is a really pretty flower and I'm gonna be inspired by it. And one of the questions you had is like, how do I get inspiration? And the other way that I get inspiration is like, if I see something really cool on Instagram or if I get a catalog, I tear out the pages or I take a screenshot of something on Instagram. So like, here's some inspiration photos I have. So like this was done, it's really hard to do. I wish I could flip my camera. Can I flip my camera? You can flip can. your camera on the phone, but I don't I know. I can. Oh. There we go. 
Okay, so this is good because I can flip to share and show you my inspirations. I just need to get out of the light here. Okay, these are different paint sets, by the way, I have to share. These are all different watercolor sets. To get started in watercolor, I mean, honestly, this one from Target or Amazon is super easy. Um, and then I got this like little travel one that someone gifted me, which has even less colors so that you mix it up here in your palette. Uh, but I think these are great. This is like a great starter set for people. Okay, so here is like an inspiration photo right here. It's a screenshot from Amazon. And the, um, let me find, uh, oh wait, here, let me just show you this one first. So here's that rose that I took a picture of. And here um, is my, it's not exact, right? But it's watercolor. And so it was just, this was my inspiration. And then this was my exploration of that. And so when I look at a drawing or a painting or an inspiration, what I pay attention to is the light values in the picture and the dark values in the picture. And when I paint, I try to paint like in a layering effect, right? So where it's light, I add the most water in the most and the least amount of color. And then that maybe will be what I'll paint like the whole area, but then I'll add, go in and add more color and more color and sort of layer the paint as I put it down. Um, on paper. So that is one inspiration photo. I did show your daughters the paintbrushes I have. So you could do, oh look, here's Cash. Say oh. hi. Hi. <laughs> I, Cash, are you an artist too? Yeah. Yeah, do you paint? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have um, a Zoom meeting with you soon then, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hold on a second, Dorothy. My son has a question for me and I need okay. to, let me, all right. So when I first got back to painting, this was an Instagram post that someone posted and I said, I'm going to try to paint that. And I actually forgot that I knew how to paint. And so it was a really fun exploration. And I tried to go really easy, really light. And that's the thing about watercolors. There's like, there's no perfection in watercolors. You're not going to get a ton of detail. And it's all about like creating impressions with watercolors. So that was one of my little first recent watercolor paintings. And then this one, which is macarons. And then. Wait, you, you did those? Yeah, I did these. Wow. In watercolor. I thought the. It was a printed picture from Instagram. No, no, they were Instagram images that like I did a screenshot because they were my oh. inspiration. You wow. asked where, so basically like when I see something I like, I'll screenshot it or, um, you know, take a picture and then just try to have fun and like recreate it in watercolor. Um, oh. So that's what, that's what these are. It's just like recreation. And so I like them because oh, of the color, like it's colorful to me. So I love color. And so I'm like, Ooh, I want to do that. It's mm. so what I look at is composition and color when something inspires me, but that's just what I'm drawn to is composition and color. And if it looks interesting. So what was your question? I was just going to ask why those two stood out to you. <laughs> and then, um, this one is a, a bedroom scene again it was like an Instagram it was an Instagram post and I just loved I love the color blue so every I really just love blue and so anything that has blue in it um, I tend to be drawn to it and um, and want to try to recreate something blue but I really love interiors and so like here's a stack of my inspiration like these are all inspiration images and it's basically like this was a target ad 
like this target ad right here. Do you see it? It's just a yeah. target ad. And, um, but I loved the blues in it and I just thought it was really interesting. And so when you look at like an ad, they're stylized, right? Like, so somebody's already thought of the composition, but it just appealed to me. And so I want to show you, I ended up painting that one because the, it was inspirational to me. So hold on, let me find that one. It's here. Okay, here it is. So there's my version oh, wow. of it. And it, and then because it's watercolor, it's just loose, right? Like you're just, the whole point of art is to have fun and create and explore. Um, it's not about perfection. It's not about performance. It's just, what can you do? Like, can you create, can you explore, can you have fun? So did you know how to do, like you look at a picture, do you already know how to do it? Or are you just trying it out and hoping for the best? Um, well, there's some element of knowing my own eye-hand coordination and then trying it. So I tend to be, like, if you look at this image here, that's a pretty tight drawing or a pretty tight piece of artwork. You know, like, I kind of got pretty detailed in it. Yeah. Um, this, this is a pretty detailed interior you know, as much as I could get detailed with watercolors, because um, you can't control water sometimes when it hits the paper, right? So right. it's pretty detailed. So my goal with watercolors is to try to get more loose and loose. So this one, again, is I feel like is a little more detailed. But then I had this picture that I thought, this is really, I love the composition. I love the colors. I'm going to try to my goal with this one is I'm going to try to not be detailed. I'm going to try to just let paint hit paint and water hit the page and not, um, and not get too into it. So this was my exploration of that. I don't know if you can see. So it's loose, super loosely inspired by this drawing, right? So when you look at it, you can probably tell that it's a, uh, you can probably tell it's an interior, um, but like I yeah. just, hit, I hit the shapes, but I went really loose um, as, as opposed to being super detailed like this drawing. Because I have the tendency to want to be really detailed. Um, so that is why sometimes I like to get loose um, here's another one that i was inspired by by this drawing so this is another artist on instagram who posted theirs which is probably an acrylic painting or an oil painting but i was like you know i just want to be inspired because i love the colors so i'm like because i love these colors i'm going to recreate something similar um, with those colors and so that was the goal with that one for myself. And I will show one more. This was a, a magazine ad for like, I just thought this is really pretty. It was like a tapestry or a carpet in a magazine. I don't know, it could be wallpaper for all I know. And, um, but I loved the color, I loved the composition, I loved the shapes. So I decided I was gonna recreate something like it. I don't think it's done yet. It's definitely not as dark as that one, but that's because it's watercolors. So it's super light. Um, and that is why I picked this one. So here's like just more examples of like inspirational photos I have. Like this is uh, a bedroom. I love like the green, you know, if I was gonna paint this in watercolor, I'd just go like, where could I leave white space? where would I put a bunch of green and where would I put gold in the image and like pretend like I was looking at it through really fuzzy glasses. Um, or like if I was almost a person that, 
you know how some people need glasses to see and if they take their glasses off it's super fuzzy that's yeah. sort of the lens that I try to look at something if I'm trying to be loose uh, and then like this picture I picked this as an inspiration photo because I just love like the patterns and the texture and I loved this piece of art on the wall like I could even just see myself trying to replicate just that piece of art on the wall just because I like it but the thing is that's somebody else's art and that's their style and I love the style but when I go to paint something like that I recognize that's not really my style you know like I could copy that if I wanted to copy it exactly but when I sit down to do it, it's not really, that isn't my style. I'm a little more loosey goosey or something. And last one, here's a, here's a, this was another photo from a magazine ad that I thought I liked the composition of the room. So I just wanted to paint that watercolor. Now, if you're getting started, all you need to do is explore. So here's another idea for someone getting started. Just pick a shape triangles and just start painting the shape of triangles and then adding like more or less water so like this has more water to the green this has less water to the green you know and and then that way you get to explore the water colors and how they go on paper and then lastly what i want to share about like the water colors is these are um I feel like these are my watercolor styles, like a series that I've done. And I call it, I literally call it pushing paint because I get on, I get my brush on the paper and I push the paint along the, um, I push my paint along the um, paper and just and add water, add color, add water, add color and see what happens. Because when you explore with watercolor, it just flows. Like the, the water and the paint just flows and attaches to the paper. So that, these are a couple of my favorites from my Pushing Paint series. Um, I think they're interesting because one, I like, I love color and I like how these colors mixed together look interesting. But then two, so like, I just like that section, like that's a really cool color combination section. Or like this section is another totally different cool color combination section. Or this section, you know, like if you look at them, they just make neat color combinations. But the other way, reason why I like this series is it almost looks like layers of the earth, you know, like striations in the way that like the core of the earth is created. And so that is why these ones are interesting to me. Um, we have I, one of those on our fridge. We have a do, postcard from you. Yeah, yeah. So, and what I did a whole bunch of these. I don't know if I told you, but for a year, 365 days, I painted and then cut these into fours and then made those as note cards and mailed them out like one a day so that at the end of the year I had sent 365 pieces of art slash 365 notes of encouragement to people all over that I wanted to encourage so I love that you still have your piece uh, oh, yeah. because uh, that's really kind of fun and I'm yes. gonna share this one here um, so this was I did this when I was in Hawaii and it's not even like this is you know like I'm playing and I'm like I don't even really like this lines back here right um I was trying to get like rippling in this the bottom of the ocean the sand I don't think it looks that amazing so everything is an exploration though um and then this I knew I wanted to paint a turtle so I like found a turtle online that I could look at to, to show me how the turtle looks and the reason why is I went snorkeling and for like 30 minutes I watched this um, turtle feed off of the coral reef for 30 minutes and I just watched him float and then eat and then the waves would go out and he'd float away from feeding and then he'd go back in and feed 
and he'd float out and he'd go back in and feed. And it was all with the movement of the waves. And so I was so inspired by this turtle just being a turtle that I wanted to capture that memory because I was inspired by the nature of what was happening. And so that's how I did this. It's like, to me, it's not like the most amazing, you know, composition because I kind of just threw, I started this way and I was like, well, I don't really like what I'm doing here. So then I added this stuff and then I added the turtle. And, but I like it because of the memory that was generated when I created it and the reasoning why I wanted to create it. So the reason why I look at art to like inspiration to create something is because I don't remember all the details of what a turtle looks like in my head, right? But I know that I can trust my eye-hand coordination to recreate a turtle if I want to. And so that's the thing about being an artist in some cases, like there, that's why I do pieces of art like this, because it doesn't require any eye-hand coordination as far as like copying something. I mean, it still requires eye-hand coordination. It's just, I'm not trying to copy anything. This is like, I get to explore, I get to play, I get to work on what colors look good together, what way to use the brush, like how do I add more water? How do I add less water? How do I add more color? And so for me, that's what that's about. Um, but then this is something entirely different to me because here I'm trying to study an image of a turtle and try to recreate that image on paper. Um, and because I don't swim with turtles every day, I don't have a recorded memory of like all of the details of a turtle, right? So that's why I would recreate something. So I have a question. Yeah. Do you make mistakes? And like, if you say, because I've tried painting like animals before and it doesn't turn out like that turtle and I get frustrated or I just feel sad, like, oh, I didn't do it or I can't do it. Can you talk to that a little bit? Mm hmm I think, um, I'm going to turn me around real quick. Oh, I'm around. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't see myself. Oh, wait. Shoot. Let me do that again. Well, okay. So, yeah, I make mistakes. and Or things don't turn out the way, like, I envision in my head. Like, I think it's going to go one way. And then when I put it down on paper, it doesn't go the way that I thought it was going to go at all. And, um, but I think paint is forgiving and you can, you can, um, or like even pencil on paper, it's forgiving and you can erase or you can start over or you can go, what did I learn from this? And how can I, um, redo what I did and try to redo it in a new way? Uh, not making that same thing that I think is a mistake. Your poor kids are, I'm talking way too much and they're doing a lot less activity than I thought that they would. <laughs> but, um, so like it, yeah, it's, it, the thing is you, you push through and you don't give up. Right. And practice is what is, is what works like just practicing and exploring and letting go of, perfectionism and and performance like I have to get this right it, this has to be perfect because well nothing's perfect right and um hold on a second it's got hot in the atrium and I gotta open the door okay okay Whew. all right well it's because um, all of those paintings you showed me they do like even the ones where you're like oh I'm just playing or even that spot where you're like oh it's not I look at them and I'm like, oh man, like they look really good. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I think it's just, I mean, there's an element of, I mean, I'm, an, I'm not going to joke. Like, I think there's an element of gifting of talent and then there's an element of practice that, and not to take the talent for granted, I guess, and really like um, play with it. So I'll share, do you want to hear about the lion painting? Yeah, because there's only nine minutes and then it's going to kick us off. Okay. Well, sometimes they don't kick you off, but. Oh, good. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. 
Uh, here is this painting. Okay, this is a succulent um, picture that I took on a walk. And I loved this succulent. And my friend and I decided we were going to get together and she's going to play music and I was going to paint. And I was like, what am I going to paint? Oh, I really love this succulent picture. I'm going to paint it. So I started painting this succulent picture. As you can see, this green. That was as far as I got. Like all this green here is, is this green underpainting was the succulent. And as I was painting it, I was like, and there was a piece of paint, there was paint on this painting already. Hold on, let me see if I can, it's like in a weird shit. Okay, there was paint on this painting already that was swirled this way. And you can't see it because it's covered up right now. And so I thought the succulent looked like it was swirled, you know what I mean? That way. And so like, as I, I was painting it, um, I didn't, I didn't really feel it. And I had this lion inspiration from another time. And I said, you know, that lion's mane is also swirled this way. I wonder if I could paint that lion mm. instead. And I'm like, well, it's not a very good photograph. It's very washed out and my printer recreated it pretty bad. And so I thought, well, what are the lightest parts on the lion? these areas and what are the darkest parts so i started at i started with the nose and i was like well can i recreate his nose and so when i paint let me get something here this isn't the right brush but when i paint i look at what is this shape what does this shape look like right like it's kind of like an upside down triangle right so i try yeah. to break I try to break things up into the most basic shape. So the basic shape is it's an upside down triangle right here with two like circles right there. And then like another littler upside down triangle or like right side up triangle down here. And, and then I try to look at like um, if, if this is this wide, you know, this way, and you follow up, that's, as, that's the same distance as between eye and eye. And you start like visually memorizing and then you can go like, oh look, there's a square, right? Like you can imagine that this is a square. So it's like a square, a triangle, two circles, another triangle, and then two circles here. And then you look and you go, this, this shape is almost like a big heart, right? Like here, we got oh, a, big, yeah. a big old uh -huh. heart right here. So visually, I start proportioning things out. Like I dissect the image a little bit and, um, and then try to play with it from that place on. So then when it, goes, when it comes time to paint, I go, well, this is roughly a triangle shape but it's got a little curve. Like when you look at the detail of the line, it's got a little curve here. It's got a few um, places up here and here. And, you know, here's my, my, my square. And then here's my rounds. And, um, you know, here's roughly my round here and my round here. So I just start piecing together those kinds of shapes to recreate. So it's basically like pulling back and again, like looking at it from, if you were gonna look at it through a fuzzy lens, like what's the basic shapes that you're gonna recreate? And then how do you transfer that onto paper or onto um, paint and stuff like that? So anyway, um, in this painting, I would say the I went into this painting um, as a form of worship and just flowing and trying to spend time in the music in the music that my friend was was creating, and it was more of like a worship music. So I really tried to get out of my own head 
and say, this doesn't have to be right. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just playing. I'm just trying to do new things. Uh, who would create a green lion anyway, right? And uh, and can I can I just make it work? Can I just have fun with it? And so uh, the whole point of art is to not go into like expecting, um, you know, that if you're going to get it right the first time. The whole point is to get in and play, and. And you ask me, like, what do I think about when I'm painting? Sometimes I don't think about anything. Like, I'm just in the moment. I'm in the moment, feeling the paint on the brush, mixing the water, mixing the colors together, and uh, just painting from there, from that place. I want to share this one. I am sharing it because you said, did you ever make a mistake? I don't really care for this piece of art, and I'm still not done with it because I don't care for it. Julie, if it kicks us off, do you have time, I don't know, more time, or do you yeah. go do something else? Um, as long as your girls aren't bored. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're interested. Okay. Well, hold on. This I'm going to share this art. Yeah, you can dial back up. I know that. So hold on. Oh, wait. It did it. Okay. Okay. So this is a, I think I am see this piece of art it's so abstract and I did not um I did not really like how it turned out because it doesn't look like anything right and so this one I just literally was like I'm gonna just flow and put paint onto paper I don't even have a vision of what I'm painting like there's nothing in my head I'm just you know, and as I painted and listened to music, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to add some white here. I'm going to add some yellow here. I'm going to put blue here. I'm going to put colors here. And um, so for me, I don't really love this painting. And it's a huge canvas. Like, this is a huge canvas to not really love it. But um, I also don't like to waste paint. And so the other day, like when I finished painting, and I had to put my paints away. I still had some paints left over. So I started adding some paints onto the canvas because I didn't want to waste that paint. And now I really like what's happening here. And I don't really know what I'm going to end up painting on here. But this is just me literally like taking paint on a brush and going like this and just slopping it on. Um, so anyway. Do, what do you think? Like when you see this painting, are you like, what is it? Is it, it's weird, you know? Like I don't know what it is. So, I, I see angel wings. Yes, I I think there are angel wings in this painting, and and, and, and see, um, a rocket, a rocket or a space shuttle or something <laughs> up in the left corner. That's so funny. I didn't think about that. Um, I almost saw like here like a start of like some butterfly wings. Hmm. Like you know how some butterflies are super colorful. Yeah. And I did see angel wings here. Um, and I felt angel wings when I was painting it. Um, and because it was worship, I think to me, this painting was about spiritual warfare, like in the heavenlies, like warfare that we can't see. But when angels, heavens, angels, armies go to battle for us, then this is what it looks like in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. um, 